The idea to Sagittaire was born in spring 2021 when I picked up archery as a hobby. And after a while I thought, wouldn't it be cool to integrate archery into a music video, especially with a harp, because these two obviously have so much in common. Um, and of course then the question occurs, what could the story be, if you want to make a video with a story? Of course, archery, then obviously you need a target. What could that be? Um, people? No. <laughs> Animals? No. Um, so what could... <laughs> yeah, well, I mean... That's very problematic. Yeah, well, you need, yeah. <laughs> maybe you need an enemy. <laughs> kind of enemy or um, a quest or something. Yeah. Um, and so I thought, yeah, it, it had to be something desirable. And something that would work in a movie. So I thought of um, of a mobile, of some some object that would also move. So I was always thinking in terms of would this look good on film. This was also the first video um, that I ever did using a storyboard. Ralph urged me to make one um, for our story that we had so far. And it was a really good idea. I urged you because I saw that in another making of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had found the location about a year ago, uh, be a year before the, the shooting, um, on a hike. And I always collect locations uh, in a special folder where I um, think, okay, maybe this could come in handy. And for Sagittaire, I thought it would be perfect. Yeah, so and it was, the, it was the perfect place, really. Yes, for, for a quest, there were a lot of big rocks to run around and jump over. The location itself, where most of the story takes place, was a little bit challenging because as beautiful as it looks with the moss-covered stones, it was also kind of wobbly and um, you, you just had to be very careful uh, where you were going. So that was... I think one of the parts of the project that I enjoyed most because it was so much fun to create this map and to put together the the, the little mountains and the trees and uh, to kind of recreate what we had filmed. So when I when I saw the results that you that you had drawn and and put together. I thought, wow, this is this looks really good, and it's like in a fantasy novel. On second sight, I, I saw, wow, this is this is the actual place. You drew the actual place that that we went to for for the filming. Curiously, once the map was there and was integrated into the film, it also made the whole film somehow a little bit more real. It was, I can't really explain it, but. Um, there was like as if we had created a world within a world just because of that map. Yeah. So, um, so thank you everybody who commented on the map. I didn't want to just order something online, some 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 costume. So um, I have to say, I have a, a big closet where I keep all kinds of costumes and stuff and uh, how do you not get lost in there yeah. <laughs> I have a map <laughs> <laughs> and um, I like to to collect all kinds of accessories and and uh, these little feathers that I'm wearing I think I got these some some years ago in a little store well you know how it is you collect things and think yeah, one day they might come in handy. Also, they're like these um, gauntlets. Gauntlets, exactly. Yeah. So I put this costume together, and um, yeah, I remember the moment when I showed you, when I was in the in the hallway, and <laughs> like, yes. is this okay? <laughs> yeah, and, then, and there was this there was this warrioress appearing in the hallway, and I I couldn't believe my eyes. I thought, wow, this is this is going to work really really well. Yeah, I thought, yeah, that's a nice costume, and that's me, and uh, I also didn't put on, like, tons of makeup. <laughs> okay. Is that how you do it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. Of course, on the film set, 
lots of people running around. We didn't have any of that. We were two people uh, doing all this um, in the forest schlepping somewhere. The Schlep stuff. Schlepping all the stuff up the hill. <laughs> trying not to fall. <laughs> trying not to fall over. And, and it was, uh, we had to plan a little bit around that. Um, maybe there was some compromises that we had mm. to make, like with the lighting. And we, we didn't have like a power generator with us. But we had, we had coffee. We did have coffee. Yeah. yeah, that was essential. And snacks. <laughs> yeah, we did a little bit of crafty, but mm -hmm. like only in a very small scale. The main part of the shooting was, um, yeah, me running through the forest, uh, you shouting faster, faster. <laughs> oh, you mean your stunt double, right? <laughs> yeah, my stunt double, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, but when I was looking at the material, I could understand Ralph because, um, yes, Wherever he said faster, faster, I thought, yeah, exactly. It it had there had to be a certain tempo yeah. in it. And It's a funny thing with in the movies because we are used to a certain pace. We are used to a certain way of a story being told in like cinema or, or other other movie contexts. And the funny thing is, you you end up running through the forest and then playing it back in slow motion. Which is which kind of feels paradox. It's, <laughs> exactly. It's, it's, it, feels, it sounds mm -hmm. stupid, but it it makes it more dramatic or more cinematic or whatever you want more to call it. But, exactly. Yeah, the way the hair flows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's and, true, yeah. Yeah. And ultimately, it, it tells a better story. We really wanted to expand our knowledge. We wanted to create a workflow for videos to come. And also, I wanted to explore this way of shooting with uh, with this widescreen picture. That way, you shoot the picture with with the full using the full sensor, and then the picture gets squeezed. And in post production, you de-squeeze the picture, and you get this widescreen image. And now you can think with the whole width of your field of view. Now you can tell a story that really fills the entire vision. And that's what we tried here. We, we tried to embed you into nature, into this beautiful landscape that you are crossing. Mm -hmm. And then you start interacting with this nature. And then at the end, somehow the nature part or the surroundings end up interacting with you. Hitting a thread or a rope with an arrow is not really spectacular, especially in, in a forest where you can't see it's much. It's also a bit difficult, isn't it? It's, yes. <laughs> and so we made some experience, I think, in, in your garden uh, with a balloon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where we also found that when you hit a balloon uh, with an arrow, of course it will pop once you hit it, but it's all over very quickly. <laughs> And that's it. I think you came up with the idea of the of the powder that was in the balloon, so it would be even more spectacular. Yeah, that that uh, that enhances the effect when the balloon pops because you can't see the air that is in the balloon, but you can very well see the powder. It's it's, it's uh, just uh, you're just your bog standard holy powder. Actually, the one that is based on cornstarch rather than nano plastic particles. So why did we need an emergency driver? <laughs> very, very good question. Um, we had permission to uh, shoot on this location um, from a forest guard and we needed that because in order to get there with all with a car, with all our equipment, we had to go about 1.5 kilometer into um, the forest on a path, on a, on a forest uh, yeah. maintenance road. It's roughly a mile. Yeah. <laughs> we had to go past a barrier and everything was organized to leave the barrier open even in the evening. And the only thing we had not known was that there were, on that day, there were also some other forest workers who did not know that we were there. And so when they left, they closed the barrier and locked it. Yeah, they were, they were very conscientious and thorough and locked everything and we couldn't get out. Yeah, leaving us um, already, yeah, it was dark. And uh, as you can see on the picture here, and uh, so we had all the equipment in the car. We couldn't move the car. I tried to call the, the forest guardian. 
he had no intention of showing up <laughs> <laughs> and rescuing us. <laughs> And yeah, so, and he he also li he didn't live close by. Mm -hmm. In his in his defense, it would have been like an hour's drive for him to get there, and, mm -hmm. and it was not an option. Yes, and um, so I called our friend Dominique Matern, and uh, he picked us up. And he yeah, on the on the, he came to the other side of the barrier <laughs> and and very kindly picked us up. Uh, made sure that it makes a lot of fog. And then... Action! Die werden doch sowieso mit der Nacht gemacht, oder? Ja, das machen wir alles nochmal dann, ne? Ja. Also man geht ja. dann nochmal ja, ja. noch hin und tut so als. Ah. I've been hunting and fishing in these parts for years. So how long did it take? We were often asked. Yeah, very, very good question. Um, so the shooting itself about maybe five days. Five days, five days of shooting. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and we had to redo some parts because they didn't work, especially with the slow motion, with the climax of the story where, uh, where Sagittaire aims for, for the balloon, for the mobile, and misses and finally hits. And, and this all, all this slow motion part, we had planned to do it in darkness, but it turned out to be very difficult to do with the slow motion mm -hmm. um, because it, slow motion needs a lot of light because the, the frames are very short. Or the, the the speed is very fast, and and therefore you need um, you need to throw a lot of light onto it, and obviously we didn't have that in the evening in the forest, uh, so we we reshot some sequences uh, a, a day after that or two days after. Mm. From the early planning, from the early pre-production, it wasn't even pre-production. We were really just loosely talking about doing something like this and, and incorporating the archery part and having a little story around that. There was new music as yet. You you really you still had to write all of that mm -hmm. and come up with uh, with this uh, epic idea. And that was probably uh, in the second half of two thousand and twenty one. And then we took another month or another couple of weeks to do the editing and the post-production. And also uh, the music, that was created as we went along. It was mm -hmm. not a piece that we had to begin with. Yes, and then there was the part where we were actually shooting the, the music scene, the, the harp in the in the forest and that was a bit tough because that was really cold i mean not really really but what was it like seven six degrees or something, something like that. that was mid-november and uh, in the north um, so it was not all the fog machine it was also my breath yeah. going <laughs> so ralph had created this really really beautiful yeah you can almost say stage for for the harp part and not only light, uh, ivy in the trees, I mean, that was already there, but to, to choose where I should sit, um, I was really, really impressed. Yeah. What makes me proudest, really, of, of this whole production is how we worked with an international team. Mm -hmm. And, and we, we were able to work, of course, remotely and, and you know, delivering things online and, and uh, recording tracks in a very high quality remotely and putting them all together and that was really a nice nice co collaboration and i'm really proud that we were able to pull it off mm -hmm. with our little yeah. team yeah. yeah yeah it was really a, a small team but a very effective mm -hmm. one yeah so thanks again for watching thanks for bearing with us for this making of sagittaire there will be more to come we have some ideas in the pipeline and um, stay tuned and make sure to subscribe to Nadia's channel. That would be lovely. Thank you also to everybody who has watched Sagittaria in the first two, three weeks. Uh, we were totally overwhelmed 
by um, how well this was received. Thank you for all your lovely comments there. You guys are really, really great. Yeah. So. Thanks so much for all the support. And stay tuned. <laughs>